Yo, hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Connecting the Dots. We have again back as our guest, uh, deep inside the rabbit hole, David Weiss. Um, what's going hey, on? Buddy. Yep, absolutely. And my co host, Philip Drazinian from Russia. Um, hey. What's going on, man? What's up? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, every day, every day that, you know, I wake up, there's something new. There's something, you know, it, the rabbit hole, I used to say it's deep. It's bottomless. There's no, there's no bottom to the rabbit hole. And uh, every time I come across one of your videos, it just takes me deeper and deeper. And, you know, everywhere I look, it people are like, where's the proof of anything from Flat Earth to Tataria? It's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Like there's a church in my town that was supposedly built in like the, early 1800s right it i don't know if they could even build it today if they wanted to exactly it's a mind-blowing i uh, have these these buildings were fireproof like they they were just like the way they spent so much money and time and the details and the intricacy in building these buildings is amazing and and the spires they go up so high with such mm -hmm. big blocks and stuff like and they're doing that back in the horse and buggy day absolutely I mean, you know, give guys modern equipment and it's going to take them a, I don't even know if they could build these buildings today. Maybe they could. I mean, I mean, they could, but I don't think they would because it's always about who, um, let's give the contract to the lowest bidder. It's always about building it with the cheapest material and it's going to last. It seems like they already know it's not going to last a long time. They have no interest in building anything that, that lasts for a long time. And they want to do it with the cheapest material they can find, you know. Yeah. So, you know. And uh, all of this is just for praying, guys. You know, that's the only reason they build so much stuff, just it, for praying. Exactly. So, and for people, so, that, let me ask, go ahead. Let me ask you a question about churches. I, I, I never really processed it. They're, they're saying that you know a lot of these old churches. What were they before they were churches? They right. were they energy centers? Were they well, centers. what were they? Well, they, there wasn't churches all the time, that's for sure. And we, we, what we kind of finding out that what uh, you know through our research is that, um, especially if you follow uh, Martin Leaker, shout out to Flat Earth British, um, that these were used for some type of buildings of some sort, like these healing um, where they had these organs. You see organs in these big churches, and no one knows how they got there. And for people that are are not understanding them and not aware of what we're talking about. We're talking about Tartaria and um, and mud floods, the, the history of Tartaria. And these Tartarian buildings that they use with these organs, you know, everything is frequency, like, right? And that just goes about what we're gonna be talking about today with free energy and the technology is mind blowing. Yes, tune in forks. You've been watching Crow Triple Seven Seven. I I ordered one and I kind of can't stop using it. Wow, it's, it's very cool. And you know what? I was like, you know, I, I believe in all this stuff, but I'm super skeptical of all of this stuff. And my knee was hurting me, and I literally just held it around my knee. And I'm like, this isn't going to do anything. And while I'm saying that, the pain in my knee went away. Wow, it's like gone. It's like gone. Wow, I'm going to give me something. I mean, I've been listening to, to Jason and he's like, oh, he's got some. I'm like, I'm going to have to get me some. I like that. Hey, speaking of Jason and Crow, I know they have a little bit of a problem with the term mud floods. Okay. So, so hang on. My, my, and, and I could see both sides. Mm -hmm. When, when I, when I think of the mud floods, I think of a, a worldwide, but maybe not everywhere mud flood. Maybe not everywhere. We have no proof that it was everywhere. We have proof that it was somewhere. Right. Right. Majority so, of so assuming that it was everywhere. I, I don't know. You know, I don't know. You're right. There, um, Philip, if you want to back me up on this, there, there isn't evidence of mud flood in certain places. I think where the Holy Roman Empire maybe was at. I, I, I may be wrong. Don't quote me on that. But you're right. We see. Um, a lot of evidence in the Russia, Asia area. Um, we see evidence in the UK area, overwhelming evidence over there. Um, overwhelming evidence in the Northern, uh, North America, 
overwhelming evidence of mud flood. Now, are these have this have they been several resets? It was this all from one um, reset, or were there multiple resets? That's still yet to be determined. You know, uh, we we don't know. All we know is that this this event happened. They didn't tell us about it in our history books. I love it. I got the same kind of cat too. A black cat. I love them. Um, black cats matter. Oh, I, I, black cats matter. Absolutely. Flat flies matter too. <laughs> so, and it's just, it's just like you know, you know. It, I, I, I know. I mean, what do you think, Philip? What do you think? Well, I'm specifically researching only 19th century because okay, you know, yes. if we're talking about the 19th century, that all these colonial style buildings which are everywhere so we can literally say that it was everywhere but i i agree with you it wasn't simultaneous it wasn't like mm. one at a time event so it's not a global catastrophe it was intentional so mm. if it was intentional it was targeting certain areas and it was you know proceeded step by step so right. i i certainly believe it the character of that reset is similar to what we have right now when one country you know gets on lockdown and people like disappear from the streets and they can perform whatever in that you know certain area so and then they move to other countries so and that's going to happen it's it's not you know it's, it's nothing new it's uh the mud itself is the finest uh, absorber of uh, biological and nuclear waste and bodies itself because you obviously bury a deceased person right for what you bury him for not spreading the the plaque or whatever disease that the person had before he was dead because you don't know actually and that's why you have the term quarantine it's uh it's connected to the word quarantine uh and um it's an italian italian word and of course it has connection to sanskrit which is caranto or 40 actually 40 days you have to be on a ship before you step on the sea on, on on the shore after you were somewhere you know in a, in a sailing somewhere so the sailors supposed to be in quarantine for 40 days and that's what we have in russia after the deceased person uh, uh we have three days the little quarantine inside your family so the people come and see uh nobody's dead yet so we can come too then you have nine days after the person dies and so all the rest of the uh, you know, maybe tribe or maybe your neighborhood you know can come and see, visit the deceased person and you know take a word about him or something and then you have 40 days also so when everybody can come and you know everybody's happy because nobody dies so that's not a spreading disease so this is this just the recent technology and everything's connected to what we have right now well exactly you know what and what made me was so interesting for me um david was once you know that this we live on a flat plane realm and we live in a, inside of a container of some sort right even the ancients knew it was a terrarium all right i mean i mean you can look at the old maps it literally says terrarium tartar tartarium i have a map where it says tartarium they knew we lived in a terrarium so think about it. you had a big vibrator right right remember the people who who control the weather control the world right so imagine you had a big rock vibrator and you know what this place is right and you're allowed to the end and you're able to put a vibration of some sort right you could actually do things with that right well you if and like with um the uh, this ancient technology they were wielding around like um these fascists of some type right where they could actually harness some energy where or you, they could make it rain you can introduce shower, uh, um, frequency to the ground, and you can have some type of of uh, resonance mud event. That's one way. You have uh, these mud volcanoes where literally liquid mud comes from the ground itself. Okay, um, is this place? Does it have a boiler room that we don't know about? I mean, it is a building of some sort, right? Right. Holy. It, exactly. Right. So there's a lot of places we're not allowed to go to, right? And I made a chart. And so, I mean, it's just like the deep it goes. It goes really deep. Um, you got hidden history. You got giants. You got photography, kind of things that we're going to go over to. Star forts, free energy. I don't know if you can see everything. 
that'll take us a week, man. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, exactly. Well, I'm just kind of talk about stuff briefly, not a whole bunch, but you have ancient technology, you have ancient maps. So all the ancient maps, right, have they show these lands that we're hitting off the maps today. So you got these lands that used to be there and how convenient, right? What if we know that there's ancient lands we don't even know about? You know, maybe if they take these people off the world stage and they go to these lands where the technology is totally different, the rules and regulations are totally different, right? They, they, they put us on a ball. There's no more land to explore, right? See, this right. is- Prison this, planet. This, right. You got to remember, Tartaria Empire was the biggest empire of the world. We're talking about the old world government, the old, old world uh, order, the old, right. old world order, right? Because we've been in a new world order. We've been in it. We were born into the new world order. You know what I mean? And, I, 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 don't, I don't buy anything before 1850. I don't, I don't think we know. I don't think we know anything, uh, right? So when people say, you know, we've known this for five hundred years, or they knew this thousands of years ago, I don't right. even know if that's if that's a, if we know anything about that. That's right, David. Why is that? You know why? Everything they, was they, invented in the eighteen hundreds. In the early nineteen hundreds, you know, in the really? from to up to nineteen twenty, they were still teaching flat Earth all across America and across the world. Absolutely. And then they changed it. World wars, depression, prohibition, everyone's fo focused on all this other crazy stuff and they wiped out the information. Yes. It's so easy to do with the short and attention span of the people. Tartarian Empire. We have, right. especially on the East Coast, there's so many, we have like the Griffins, like these gargoyles, yeah. you would see all these little things. I'd be like, wow, what, what was the past all about? And what we're coming to find out, this was um, a, a worldwide, like government, a uh, uh, empire that was in sync with one another. These they built the same structures all over the world. Like a one world government sounds like a, a great idea, government. right? Like this is what they, <laughs> this is what they've been doing. We don't know, right? This is what, yeah. this, is what this is what they hid from us. Right now, yeah. you would think, okay, now they're gonna they know what happened. Where did the targets go? That's still under investigation right now. Is there are there the bones? Under in Paris, underneath the the, the catacombs, we did they know. flow? Did they flow outwards with their son at the time? And our son is a new son, right? Could be. If anyone hasn't seen it, I did a talk with Sophia Smallstorm called "The Outward Flow of Civilizations." It's on my channel, DITRH. Um, it's a short talk we had just of a possibility that there was a different sun here, and it started oscillating farther out. And a new sun, our sun, Apollo, was born in the center and started a new civilization mm -hmm. in the middle. And so the original civilization all flowed outwards. Like if all of the north was frozen through the summer, everyone's going to go south, which is outwards in all directions. Right. And then there'll be a new ice barrier between the two worlds. And they could not know about each other, especially if they, you know, since they've taken airships out, you know, Lighter than air vehicles out of existence. Absolutely. And speaking of airships, this is what's one of the technologies we come to find out that the Tartarians was very advanced. I mean, yes. I mean, very advanced. Matter of fact, John Levi, he has he put out a video called North American, um, where he shows you where all the ancient like um roads and stuff like that. Um I can go over it. Let me uh, uh, let's just skip it for for now because okay. that will be wrong. As for I, what I think is just you know there's a big mis mis misunderstanding that Tartaria was not the whole empire. It was just a part of it. So that's the last part of that empire that was you know hanging on with this self governance system, self governance system, not democracy. The self governance system, it actually. What they take uh, from the self-governance system is what we know as democracy, all these ideals of democracy, but actually this doesn't work in our world. And uh, the, the, the empire itself what was called uh, the Rus or Midgard. So Rus or Ross or Rosh in different pronunciations. So that's why we have all these battles in Bible between the, the Duke of Rosh and Gog and Magog. It's, it's something from that. So. The, this whole empire was called Rosh, and and it's it's literally red, red bloods. 
So everybody who has red blood is actually local from this empire. And then we have the blue bloods who who actually uh, gained the control here. And what they did is made a war between the whites and reds. And whites is the, the so-called elites. Um, these are controlled controlled elites uh, and the controllers this, and themselves are the parasites and I call them blue bloods because they they have this um, cuprum OH is which is uh, di uh, the copper dioxide in their blood that's why you have this little blue color in the spectrum uh, and still it's it's obviously uh, tra trackable here and we have some descendants and offsprings of those blue bloods and uh, the controls themselves they don't hide. They, they 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 share this information with the world, and everybody knows. And if you if you search that, it's not some type of conspiracy. They are not hiding. I have a video about this Crow Crow and Ray Bradbury, which actually has this paradigm totally exposed how it's working, and so on. So the Tartaria was just the, the last part of the empire, and Tartarians themselves are actually the miners. So this was like the the miners' land miners wasteland i would call them and that's what we have um, because the technology of tartaria is very similar to what the empire of ross had and that's why this right. a, a misunderstanding of calling everything tartaria but it's not actually everything so do you understand what he means david by mining a lot of people you may not be like okay well i don't understand well they you know about the giants right the, the giants existed there's overwhelming evidence that they existed well, these uh, absolutely people, they terraformed this place um um of uh, uh, philip did a good job he did a, um a few years ago he, he made a video showed how like long island you could you could see how long island like the like the whole sound break was built the whole like the whole like uh, side of new york and where like battery park it's all like man-made like like by big humans yeah i kid you not like yeah, if you look on like a uh, google or google search you can actually see like it looks like it's been shoveled or shoveled up it was actually yeah i've seen that i've seen i've seen that terraform like yeah these things were terraform like these ancients was no joke and their mind the thing about all the minerals every all the precious minerals everything that we have everything we use it's all for mining yeah. Everything, everything is all for mining. So they have to put this waste somewhere, right? Well, that's why do you think that with these big mountains that we think they're naturally there? What if they're just big mining waste that these giants, these titans that roam the earth left behind a long time ago? Not only giants, but also local people did the mining. So everybody was oh, doing the mining. So mining, everything. This is all like, yeah, you have what, evidence of big gigantic trees. Well, if that uh, you know fossilized and petrified, you got this where you all get rubies. You get all your. I mean, this is just a plethora of resources that we're mining. You know, Mike Wickerson, Stellium Seven, his work on uh, on the Titans and the hearts and everything. Yeah. And I, I was just uh, at the beach the other day, very rocky beach, and I just looked down. First rock I picked up. Not only did it have all of the shapes of the heart. Mm -hmm. It had the holes. It, 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 it. Holes. Yeah, it had the mean. little. It had. I was like, right. there's no way that there's 37 different similarities to a friggin' heart in something that's just tumbling around the ocean. Really? And what I think we don't realize it was, it was everywhere. A lot of people here back in the days. Yeah. And I think that what they think what Crow what we're talking about with Jason and Crow, I really talked to so much about uh, with Crow yet, um, but with Jason and Rose, I think. I think they're coming along a little bit. I mean, with it, I think what people don't realize is the chronology timeline is completely uh, wrong. Like they added literally a thousand years to the timeline. So right. of course, people are going to have hard time with this. Your religious people are going to have time hard time because oh, but that's not what the Bible says. And the people who who know it's all a lie, but they don't really understand that they added like a thousand years to the timeline, like. The flood, Noah's flood, wasn't that long ago. And and if the if the Earth was the age that they they did that the helio nonsensical model says yeah. it is, adding a thousand years is nothing. But right. adding a thousand years to the actual age of the Earth is a massive move. A massive move. 
Well, exactly. So now you have yeah. all these, you have these J's and these I's they used back in the day, yep. right? So, and they get that and then, oh, oh, that means, oh, it was 19. It must have been 1500, but no, it was the year 500. And I think that that's what a lot of people are having t- time with is the chronology timeline of what's of what's going on because you got to remember when i came into the flat earth i had to put everything on on the table it's like the mother of all eyes but what even what i had to put everything on the table was even more was when i came into tartaria and mud flood because maybe the the globe you know one of the main reasons i know i mean the main reason for the globe deception is to hide the creator make you think that's it that's all there is truman there's nothing else to discover right um and to hide the possibility of Tataria and giants. So you can't have giants that size on a globe. That's right. You can't you can't have a mud flood right. on a globe. Well, why do you think they came up with dinosaurs in the 1800s? Because they right. knew people were gonna find these big bones and they had to they oh. have an explanation for everything, David. Everything, all history, that's me and um Philip, we did a video um like last year. We we're talking about you can't find any graveyards past the 1700s. I think the oldest one was like 1780 something. After that, that's it. Like all of our history, even everything's under mud, like the old graveyards, which is, which what that's what's shown because all of our history has to be excavated, right? All of our history. And yeah. the explanation is, oh, cultural layerings. It's not, I mean, it was a mud flood. Yeah. You, so, you know, um. I want to mention this before I forget. On, uh, on on Facebook, on YouTube, I occasionally come across a video where it's two indigenous young men that'll like go and they'll start with just with a with a metal knife or a pick, picking oh, away sure, at a bro. rock, and they build these little huts. Yes, right. I love it. So we wait, my wife watching all the time. Right. Yeah, so so amazing. And then I watched one the other day. They it, they supposedly did it in a day, right? This amazing mm-hmm. little hut and everything. And to me, anyway, they never broke a sweat. They never took a drink of water. They didn't even get dirty. And they're not even using pails. They're pushing all the dirt away. I think the purpose of these videos is to subconsciously make people think that, yes, people with picks and axe can make these buildings that they're finding in the side of cliffs. It's it's mind control because someone will see these things and like, is that from a mud flood? Is that from petrification of some sort? Or was that carved out? And so now we see these guys doing this. But if you watch those videos, those kids don't get dirty. They don't sweat. Their hair doesn't even get messed up. Bullshit. You think so? Me and my Bullshit. Uh, yeah, I think they built that. But even in the cuts, there's probably had some guys in there with some real power tools and stuff. That? Oh, wow. Because me and my wife really was thinking that these guys were legit. We're watch like, them. Yeah. Watch it again. Watch it again. Yeah, and you'll see. Good. Like... They're they're pushing all the dirt away with their arms, but they don't even get dirty. They would be Same dirty, way. sweaty, drinking water. Their hair doesn't even get messed up. Okay, yes. there's no way that yeah. that's done, and it's it's mind control. So yeah, it's cool. They built this thing, and yeah, could it be done? Sure, this is all done. You know, the guy that built the house, you know, in the K in the thing, it's all to make you believe that these big buildings that we're finding. Um, we're done the same way. Wow. Um, uh, yeah, we, I, we, have, we have this group in Russia, which is like totally uh, bashing all these alternative theories. They, they call themselves scientists against conspiracy. And what they actually, you know, they try to debunk everything. So, and including mud flood and all these constructions and stuff. You remind, you remind me this case that they started to make uh, ancient vases you know those beautiful uh vases from uh, uh they 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 did it from marble so by hand by hand tools like drilling and drilling for nine months they you know and then they messed up it it, it broke up so and then we said why are you doing it from marble just do it from diary like ancient egyptians had in in these museums and you show it us in official science diary is the second uh toughest material why don't you do it from diary and they said oh shit, we don't do it so and they do it only from marble and from all this material that everybody can do. So I'm and, just and, saying, and you look at some of them, the the symmetry on the faces is exact, right? You can only do that with 
you know, today with laser precision, laser machines, you know, that are, that are doing it, not by a guy with a chisel, who's an artist, you know, all of these statues that are cut out from a single piece of rock with, you know, with ma material veils made out of the same. Oh, nonsense. They, what? they, they had a way to, I don't know. I have no idea how they did it, but it wasn't with a chisel and a freaking hammer. No. And I'm going to tell you something. That's just more proof that, our ancients were way more advanced than we give them credit to. I mean, we have, we have, we don't have, I don't think we can fathom how, uh, how um, advanced uh, this place was and, 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 and the ancients were. I mean, I'm, I'm using maglevs. That's what I'm saying. We are the pinnacle of intelligence in the upside down world, which means we're at the bottom. We're at the bottom. Absolutely. <laughs> we're at the bottom. Right? I mean, and it, it, it's just, it's crazy what, you know, from the early 1900s and, and before what was here, there's the evidence is, is, is beyond. And then I'm sure you guys are in agreement that, you know, the Hindenburg was a, was a staged event to say hydrogen airships are too dangerous. And NASA has bought up every helium company. So there's a helium shortage, right. whether you want to admit NASA is using it or not. I don't think there's any helium shortage. There's plenty of helium. They just don't want, uh, independent, you know, people building a helium, uh, you know, no airship. Way to go. Because yeah, think right. about this: what would you rather go on, a cruise ship or an airship? Right? Of course, you go on the airship, and the airship, the cruise ships use like a gallon of fuel every three miles, or like the Queen Mary is like a gallon of not three miles every three feet. It's oh, ridiculous. You can, you can see how flat it is too. That's why they, that's a good. And, why and in an airship, an engine. Right. A soul, couple solar panels. Right. You're. I mean, there's better technology than that, but right. you can go anywhere you want, and they can't right. have that. And right, and you you can see how flat it is too up there. You have like this little curved window. Yeah. And you know, there's you know, a bunch of a bunch of towers that have no explanation except that they could be docking stations for these ancient zeppelins or an airship. So, right. just a whole bunch of towers, and you have pictures of uh, the same examples uh, from the beginning of 20th century when they were docking those huge zeppelins to skyscrapers and big you know towers and uh, you know unloading people and loading fuel so that could be easily explained with those towers because there's numerous of them and uh, I'm just saying that if you have skills you can build whatever but right now what we lost actually we lost skills we lost the tech and we just you know we've been sold all this information that's totally useless to us if we you know step out of the city step out of uh, our uh, ordinary uh, routine environment we can probably we won't survive you know just imagine if anything happens what can we do actually without internet and electricity and water right you know? we got the old ways and that's why all these trappers everywhere and they you know you know and these, guess what these tartarians i mean they were they were master masons man they're these, these i mean we master masons and master masons i mean these the way they went they they you know they had swords on them swords think about it you got to remember iran is ancient tartary right iran turkey it's all ancient tartary man if people knew their true history Right, I got. I can go to that in Pennsylvania. Right, you got these old Muslim mosques all over the place. No one knows how they got there. Right, that's because guess what? The tar the most um, Tartaria was a, a mixture of all different kinds of people, um, mostly called a term called Melungeon. Different races means Melungeon. They, they 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 got rid of that word. That's why he used the word biracial, but no, it's Melungeon. That's for, 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 for multiracial people. And they had like swords, very smart, spoke multiple languages. This is the kind of game I'm trying to give you a picture of like what these charts, I mean, what these charters were. But don't let it be fooled. These guys were master masons, uh, master secret societies too, well back then. Um, and they're, they're, they're still passing off the torch today. And they purposely hid this history from us. Do you guys um have you looked into that tower? <laughs> Excuse me. The tower that in uh, North Korea that's taller than the trade towers were, an ancient building in North oh, yeah. Korea. The pyramid. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. And they, they put that's a new skin on it, so they're making yeah. it look modern. It was in a mud flood too. It's like it was. They, they took like a, like I forgot with two years to get all the mud from around it. 
Yeah, it was a yeah. pyramid. Yeah. It had, win yeah. It had windows and everything. Look, that's... Maybe that's the reason why North Korea is off limits. They don't want us going why? there. It's a whole other thing. It's well, I, can, I can share you uh, the, you know, very good footage from China that people sent me like two years ago. And it can actually, you know. Please do. Because um, I don't really buy that uh, North Korean one because, you know, I'm very skeptical to, we don't have any footage be of, of the, um, you know, ancient you times. You know what I'm skeptical of is Kim Jong-un. I don't believe he's a leader yeah. at all. I think he's an autistic mental patient that they take out of the institution and they say, okay, smile. And he's class and he's class. Have you ever seen him do anything intelligent? He's yeah. just a... He's just a handicapped. Yeah. Um, and can you, you know, see this? Right. Angolo. Right. So yeah. this is just the guy who was uh, my my fellow friend who was uh, you know in they China and right and he, he got all these uh, Google pictures coordinates Google uh, Google Earth co coordinates and he went to these specific places where he saw all those pyramids uh, are and this is how it looks. So like Chinese Chinese man like doing whatever farming and look at the trees they planted trees on the pyramid just uh so he he sent me all this picture and i, I said like yes this is looks completely excavated area look at this places so this is this is the, the tracks of excavation so they excavate a lot there and uh let me jump to this is maybe a better one so this is how they planned the trees they put the soil and dirt on, on the top of the all those pyramid uh, structures and plant the trees so they can hide it so they can look like a mountains and stuff but if you come closer you find out that this is not a mountain actually uh i don't know how to uh, this is so this is like Yep. Cl comes closer and this is the coordinates of the place he's riding around picture in it he found an old, old picture without trees of that exact same place yeah, pyramids all over the world yeah. the one that they just look how many they have there oh, yeah it's all over the world north america so many pyramids too oh my gosh yeah So all this, uh, you know, is just the pyramid structures, and they look like a micro scheme from the top. Right, a yeah. grid system. You see that, like a kind of grid system. Yep. All right, keep that grid system. Say a microchip. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe those ancient miners were more aware of how the world energy works, and actually they were harvesting harvesting energy from, so right. they can be, you know, autonomous mining procedures without any energy sources. And let me jump to the place where he or they used worked. the ground as a grid itself that like we don't use. So sometimes he cannot just walk to it because there's a whole bunch of fields and stuff. But you know, he jumped to one and he saw this picture, no trespass in here. And he went further and saw this, uh, you know, I don't know, monument something. He said like uh, archaeological something on this. He couldn't read and you know he he saw this man coming to him it's like no no don't film here and then he walks to this fence and here we go he saw this excavation look how many dirt and mud here so they excavated mm -hmm. the entrance to the previous site as you can see people are working here in excavation so this is the actual layer of the clay after that mud spill that was in this area so everything is buried by like 15 meters of yeah. and, clay. and so for the sleeping people that have seen those guys you know, carve out the little huts mm -hmm. in the side they'll be like they're, they're just carving that out and then you have an argument that never ends mm -hmm. Right. So all those places that we right now see as like some geological um, beauties or sites where people travel to, this is just ancient mining sites. And they look like, you know, a bunch of this mining stuff was coming from the top because it's obviously 
looking like you know when something is depositing from like a fountain and it's drying out you have all those layers that come in from one side to another side depending on the on the surface uh, landscape that it, it creates and this is like uh the the pictures from the giza complex as you can see this is all excavated over here the layer is pretty much the same about three five meters of uh clay and you have this block right. system uh and, uh, and it's you know i would say it's a pipe very yeah it's a pipeline so some something like was a pipe here so it was like a, a chemical plant or something maybe it was piping water like Qaddafi's man-made river you guys saw that right oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They were pumping water from Nile, and Nile has a bunch of this mud inside with aluminum and other metal solutions inside. So this is probably was used to dry out and separate the aluminum and the precious metal from this water. And this is the complex itself. So all the Giza complex is not actually the sub subtonic, subphotonic sh shows that this is melting. It's not melting. It's just because the acids and stuff like this in, were used in the chambers and the acids uh, melted those steps uh, and stuff like this. And all this pure water that comes out in on those lakes and stuff like this is looking like uh, just previous quarries. Uh, the water comes from beneath. It's from the mining drilling. And uh, this is how you explain it. So and all these, uh, you know, devices in Egyptian museums, right. you cannot explain it like certain plates. It's just, you know, a vent from something or, you know, device that could be used to pump the water or solution inside those chambers. So the Giza complex is also looking like a micro scheme itself, but it, it could be a chemical plant, who knows? As you can see, a bunch of those chemical type of uh, stuff is in, in ancient museums. Wait a minute. And all you're, you're telling me that those pyramids weren't made to bury a king? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> and this chamber is just closed. I never believed that. <laughs> so if that was actually a pyramid, who would close the entrance right. like this? It was just, the, you know, the place so you won't go there and find out that this is just a chemical plant if you find out that that's a chemical plant you totally ruin the official history look at those gates and those uh system this is underground system of chemical plant this is the channel roots guys of the chemical devices nobody would do it like this for for nothing and this is actually explains because you know you you have to follow the money and the mining is money look at look at this previous one as you can see yeah it's it's just like colorado i mean um you know like the whole gorgeous what is this what is this what it's is this money. it's a door of something for the liquid to shut the liquid down so you can stop it actually and all these chambers are perfectly underground right now, buried with the mud. Look at those systems of separation. It's just the channels where it was drying out. And it's in perfect condition because the weather in Egypt is very fine to dry out all these elements. And then there's a, those channels are everywhere around this complex. And this is like, a, it's called the basalt floor. It was also excavated there and it looks like a, a floor to a very, very dark one. And it's created from the basalt. It was rather flat. And so I think that was just to separate the salts from these solutions. So you can separate the salt because it's he, he, when you hit something like a salt water or salt liquid, the salt will evaporate, uh, you know, the water will uh, evaporate and the salt will uh, stay on, 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 on the top. And salt is actually the solution of metal and something that you actually need to to produce or something. So, so all this stuff is just ancient chemical plants and uh, mining sites. And that was dri the driver of the economy back in the days, guys. So I would say that would let's see let's just skip that and go to the mud flood examples like this building for example 
you can see it has like buried windows here and uh, rather big Shut entrance. Up. Yeah, look at that, see? So that's the perfect example. And those guys, uh, this is just not a random picture actually, those guys are posing and they have all the hidden handers here. The people who are actually controlling the, the reset population when you reset the city or something with the mud flood or whatever, whatever you, pop yeah, you populate it with the, the new people. And we have this evidence that Moscow was populated with much uh, migrants, uh, whatever, from the rural areas in, uh, in the late 1900s. And that's where you can find those pictures with the uh, hidden handers in Paris in uh, any town, I would say. And each and every one has these empty cities with no people. Yeah, so I was going to go over with. I was going to go over that absolutely. And for example, this is inside Kremlin. What are they creating here? This excavation and renovation of some structure that was, you know, buried here inside the Kremlin. This is the, you know, this this building, this Capitol building. Right. Also, is that in Washington? Yes. Yep. This is uh, the construction company uh, uploaded those pictures. Yeah, Look. they have to talk to Gary and Al in, um, right by the, uh, the pentagram in Washington, D.C. This is Capitol, right and the White yeah. House itself has the same structure, underground floors and the basements and uh, bunkers, all yeah. this inside. This is Polytechnical Museum near my office in Moscow, and you, you this is the line of the, the ground, and you can see those windows with the glass that were buried under the layer of yeah. mud and dirt. So they still have glass in those windows. They remove the mud. This is the Kremlin wall. You can see that the wall is a lot deeper than it, it is right now. This is the le level of the current level, and this is what was excavated. And you can see this ancient wall of an ancient Star Force. By the way, Star Force uh, yeah. are the miners, uh, you know, protection uh, sites. So they can, you know, right. this logistics and uh, tunneling and uh, transportation system. Do you, know what, do you know what Star Forts are, David? I know a little bit about them. Is is, okay. is Washington a star fort or is there a star fort Every, in Washington? Everything. Yeah, star yeah. forts all over the world. Hey, uh, hey, do me a big favor. Can you run over some uh, star forts with him and show him? It's all over the world. And these are made by red bricks. These star forts. Are I've, seen, I've seen them. I just, what is, is it an energy thing again or what is it? That's I would say that's a mining site. So the miners come to place, certain place, they find those, you know, elements or whatever they want to do and uh, to mine there. This is economic, you know, logic here. So they establish some, you know, I would, I will jump to that uh, picture with the, the first part of the star fort. It's just a square with the shape of, you know, the angles. And then they, you know, put the generator inside some church that is actually the generator and uh and so on so uh, then the city grows the people come the right. more workers come human resources come logistics come all the cities get connected with tunnels yeah. it's a of pneumatic yeah. transportation and uh air so fleet and and the, 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 the oligarchs and uh, the 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 aristocrats that are basing right on those uh star forts itself and then you go to the place and you can find some places like this which have no explanation at all what the hell is this and it's everywhere in every city you can you know dig a little deeper and you can find those structures and for example those pictures they call it uh those guys the ruinists there's a bunch of artists who were picturing rome moscow a bunch of other cities with those you know trees on the rooftops so that kind of proves uh, that the reset was before the 19th century too. So the people were abandoning the, the places. And so it was like growing this way. So nobody was living for a couple of decades. It's, and then the new population comes and inhabits the area. And that explains why you see those old structures buried everywhere with those windows. Sometimes that they bricked up and sometimes they have more sub basement levels. So there's no explanation like basement actually for those places so what do you think they're doing they're taking places that weren't destroyed and moving people into these 
you know, yep. places to repopulate. Yep, exactly. So, for example, uh, you can find some like this. It's very deep, like nine meters deep. In Egypt, they found this coffin made of, you know, metal or something. Like nobody ever found anything like this in Egypt. Or oh, this is was 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 excavated like this is two meters deep, and they find those ancient elements of the de decoration underneath, and this is the pictures of the miner. I think this is just you know exaggeration. Like they painted them as uh, some certain creatures, but actually what they were doing, they were digging tunnels, as you can see. So who knows? Maybe they biological robots. Who knows? Whoever, maybe this is just uh, you know the comparison of what we have right now. Because if you were like you've seen those those machines that can dig tunnels, how can you explain? Right. How can you draw them if you don't see them anymore? And you, you, maybe somebody told you that they had some 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 sort of it's machine. The, the same machines that dug out the Holland Tunnel and the Lincoln Tunnel. Same yep. machines where they do all these dumbs and bunkers. They go underground. Absolutely. You can find those marble statues everywhere underground. Yeah, you the can fact find that they're those. hiding, you know, they don't tell us much about the current tunnel machines, you know, but what you find out is they're making these huge tunnels, they're melting rock, they're going, you know, I forget how many feet per minute, but it's relatively quick through solid rock. Exactly. So, and they don't talk about it just like NASA doesn't talk about the massive amount of balloons they put up there. Right. You know, that are holding satellites up. Absolutely. We have just a whole bunch of excavated blocks. This is like near my office also. Can you see those windows are bricked up right now? But this yeah. is like arch, yeah. arch ceiling type of structures of Tartarian style, as we, we can call it. And uh, a bunch of places have this underground basement levels, and they call them, uh, they just, you know, decorate them to look fancy. But actually, this is not what we it looks like, like it's not it's more ancient than you you can think actually and it's everywhere in every city uh you can make an excavation look well, this is very prohibited area you cannot just do excavation anywhere actually if you find something you have to report it to the officials well it's a reason why in north america over here we have so much federal land like they have land they don't want people to go to these national parks that's because they're hiding a lot of the, the history and, and those things holes guys everywhere uh, just uh, this is just mining evidence because mining has different methods so if you mine something from underneath sooner or later you're gonna have this mudslide or sinkhole or whatever that can swallow just the whole neighborhood and a gas bubble can pop up or whatever that we have a bunch of evidence of that or railroad could collapse or maybe a car in front of you can collapse and underneath and just if you go somewhere you can find some certain areas and you can go deeper and you won't find the end actually those tunnels are everywhere and who actually knows who built those, those tunnels you know the, the people send me this footage that actually yeah. actually they don't post it everywhere i have a bunch of exclusive footage yeah. actually well you know we did a video called tartarian brick uh, a couple of years ago and where they just built these we use these red bricks to build the whole damn world these tartarians uh they just use these red bricks you find everywhere now stop it right there for a second yeah, this is an excavation of the Here railroad. Photo of how they just invest, you know, um, excavated this railroad track, right? Yep. Right. These because they, right, they're not going to. And then what they will give you an explanation. Oh, well, you know, you know, the railroads came a certain date. No, 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 they didn't. You know, they, this technology has been here for a way long time. Exactly. And the steam engine is what we use right now in our internal combustion engines, right? It's the same technology. Okay, what else could I find? Uh, this, uh, this is what I was trying to talk about, Starforts. This is the uh, abandoned Starfort in Ukraine. And inside of it, you can see this little something. This is actually a gas well. And there's a bunch of this. It's just a network of those gas wells in Ukraine with the same shape. 
and uh, this is the best for protection from wild animals from you know gangs i don't know so you can protect your site and what delineates that as a star fort it could be used as a star fort after you upgrade it as a star fort but every star fort has this little star fort inside of it so this little star fort was actually the gas a pipeline or gas reservoir who, that could be power in the city after it's uh, you know established after the resource was you know so what uh, philip is saying david is that they're not the star for these military bases that we were growing up to be yep taught they were you know, philip um his hypothesis is and which i'm kind of um leaning in that direction now um is that these were gas stations of some sort yeah you, some, somewhere it was a gas station somehow, somewhere it was a, mining station who else mining was, station. because the gas is everywhere actually you can drill everywhere and you can find gas uh, you That's can exactly. find oil and this is just you know the, the 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 case of cost that's why they don't mine everywhere because you can mine somewhere with the cheaper cost the cheaper expenses so this is just um uh, the pictures from the mud volcanoes, so-called mud, mud volcanoes. Actually, the mud comes up with the pressure, with the gas and little water solution. And when it dries out, it becomes more yellow, red type of, because it's it, it has this uh, rusty color of oxidation okay. process. Now, you remember and, I said boiler room, uh, David? <laughs> yep. So the mud can, can pop pile anywhere and you know just solve the city uh, just uh, flood the city or the village and you can have this type of <laughs> situation like when you wake up and you see in the mud is in your you know backyard right and in the, in, the, in indonesia that had the case when chevron company was trying to drill something and they messed up with this drilling process and something was wrong and so it's like already 12 years or 13 years of uh this uh, uh eruption so-called eruption of this mining site and the mud just comes and comes and it's not stopping because the huge pressure of gas and oil underneath and i've been personally on some of it, those it's been work. coming for 12 years 12 years and it's not stopping and nothing and, stop and i'm it. sure chevron is compensating those people for their discomfort and displacement nobody yeah. nobody nobody <laughs> they, yeah. they just they they pay the journalists uh, to shut this topic down you know <laughs> look, look at those. they was th these guys were pretty happy to see it, this building to to be sunk in the mud. And that's recent history so the mud is uh something that no, can come real. out anywhere and that's why my theory that if if all the cities were mine inside right if drilling was everywhere because you can drill for the water for example water source can be drilled anywhere you know this water from underground can be drilled in any backyard mm -hmm. and you can mess up something up and you know those layers can mix up and what? the huge pressure of mud can come up actually what about the idea of a you know worldwide or, or massive flood from the waters above pressure pull, pushing the mud out of the ground from the water pressure oh what are you saying uh, what any water that we can see on this world on this earth because the ancients called this place earth we have a bunch of land, earth. the dry land earth right yeah yeah we know what dry land is but in russia it's called zemlya zemlya it's, it's, it's right? actually soil and dry land so right. so Think about it. we live on a flat i don't mean to interrupt you we live on a flat earth right the lands are much actually closer than what they we've been taught all the projection maps and Mercator and all that, it's all nonsense, right? Think about it, or, or the flat earth, all the lands are much closer, right? And we don't have titanic plates like we've been taught, right? It's this land that's basically floating on this water. And if even in the Bible it says uh, God called the dry land earth, but if 70% of this place is water, a water world, then what's the name of this place? What, what is this place? Okay. Yeah, so, terrible. you know, it's, a, it's not like what you, that's why I said, we say, well, how is flat earth important? Now, a lot of people, I mean, I put out videos about Tartarian, but it, it has everything to do with this. You have to understand we live in an enclosed system of some sort and, and what this place is because, so you got to actually understand 
this history uh, um, uh, much maybe, better. Maybe everything is water, and then God separated the waters from the waters and created Earth, yeah, Earth. adding that to the water. Absolutely, that's it. That's it. Absolutely, and this Earth is magical. Think about it. We grow food in it. We bury ourselves in it. We get all the minerals and mining, everything we need from this earth. This place is magical. I mean, it's water. You can't do the do. You could dirty the hell out of water and still uh, filter it to, and drink and, and drink the water clean. It's, it's magical if you really think about it. Here, I want to I want to start screen share. I want to show you Wait, that. Philip wanted to say something. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. If we talk about this closed system that is right now closed, actually it wasn't closed before, but right now it's closed because due to some certain obstacles that okay. uh, and the parasites um, performed. So um, what we have, the water here, all the water is salted. Most of the water is salt water. So if you actually research mining, you find out that at any quarry, if you abandon the quarry, the water comes from underneath and it's always with some solution some premises of salt or some minerals or whatever it's not pure rain water from like what we have from the from the sky so and that's the, what i'm trying to say is that salt water <laughs> is just the cause of the quarry in the world before so somebody was quarrying and terraforming this place and that's why we have all this salt water uh, which we call seas and oceans okay what do you think our Indians are? Our Indian, the Indians were the survivors of this cataclysm. I put out a video it's called North American Tartarian Moors. That's what they were. They called these Indians, they were tortures. They were survivors. Something happened where North America was big. I mean, New York was developed. These had developed cities, countries. They were thriving. These people must have been very wealthy or lived in nice lives. They don't remember nothing. Then you have these insane asylums, these asylums all over the world. Is that where they put the the elder people at? And, you know, is that where they killed them off at? When you know, in asylums in these Tartarian big places. It's just a lot of um um you have my favorite topic is the fondlings. These fondlings, these orphan um the orphan trains where they yeah you, you you, do you remember, Dave? You remember hearing stories? You remember like the our great great our grandparents? We we always heard stories like, oh, I used to work when I was twelve years old and thirteen years old. I used to work the farm, right? Like, just un unheard of, like what we would have our kids work the age and where we work today, or they had it because all the adults wasn't around. They shipped these kids off on these orphan trains to repopulate these empty cities. Yeah, Ray Bradbury wrote a book about that's why I have this video, Crow, Crow, Crown and Ray Bradbury, because it's a perfect example how this stuff was performed. Burning books and teaching kids the new stuff, so how they're supposed to, you know, actually know without their elders who tell them the, the real story. Nobody can tell them. And all those people who were performing, they have these hidden handers and blacks, mason communities and societies which popped out in 19th century in large numbers in every city so this is what actually bradbury wrote a book about it and this destruction and the post recent times and so on <clears throat> but i wanted to you know also add so the david uh, uh, so you can understand uh that the the largest lie is to hide the te technology we, we started from what is actually the church and so wh whatever i was finding is that the church and every other building with the spires was a multi-purpose building so they weren't just building for some one reason or single reason it was a multi-purpose so it could be autonomous energy sufficient healing on whatever and capacity for you know placing people in certain you know um, apartments stories or whatever so they can be using it for multiple reasons and that's why they have these tunnels everywhere because the tunnels were the system of transportation that's why we don't see many you know evidence above because it's buried right now with the mud for example and the places are excavated as richard sold each and every city was excavated big time especially in america and conquering the wild west and this west world movie you can also watch uh, the idea of how it actually works because 
yeah. this wild west frontier stuff this is how the area was populated with those people who are, who know what's actually going on who who yeah. have the ability well, to just, kill the people I'm glad, have the that, huh? I'm glad that you said that phil because the wild west that we were taught david here in america it was different that was actually to go uncover and excavate all the gold, the Tartarian treasures yep. on the West Coast of San Francisco, everything, yep. that was like an earthquake. It was all on the ground, like people didn't want to go out there. And so that was the reason why they, uh, for the push to go out yep. West. And, and destroy you know, and destroying every evidence of that. Right. Robbing right. people. Tartarians, right, yeah. yeah. Robbing people, killing the large wow. amounts of people and just right. destroying the evidence. This is robbery, actually. The the, the state covered governance, covered Mason societies, covered Illuminati societies, covered robbery process that was everywhere after the reset. Because the reset My is the time God. when you the opportunities come and you know they, they start shooting people, you know. All right. So now you come here, you refit the buildings. So you, you refit the buildings, you 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 do the paras the parasites, the controllers get rid of all the remaining giants left over, right? The Tartarian giant, all the all the remaining giants left, hunt them down, exterminate them, right? Was it is that the reason why that they're suppressing that um, with the early vaccinations? They I mean they was doing. I mean, we don't know. Or they just, you know, we don't know. Yeah, there's a bunch of evidence that, like, Indians were uh, had this disease, like uh, missiles and stuff like this. They gave them blankets, which are infected with something, and like everybody was dying because of yeah. that. Or they gave them alcohol so they can be like drinking and you know not doing anything and actually starving to death. They killed all those buffaloes and stuff. This is all the same logic chain of how to conquer those local people which are survivors of those events after bombing yeah. after mud floods after resets and whatever and a bunch of undergrounds filled with bones and most of those bones uh look like cooked bones so the people were eating people because they were starving to death and living underground so and probably had those religious cults and that's why paris underground is filled with three million at least I three million skulls. Yeah, so, we don't know and, each and every church has its underground. You can find a bunch of bones in everywhere. Like Europe is filled with bones. People were eating people because you know they had nothing to eat, and they they wouldn't. They were not let to go up there up there to hunt or something, and that's why they had no trees, nothing. So they had these ancient capacities underground, and they used them to live. And so the controllers used human resources to. To feed themselves actually and that's why we have all these scandals recently with Epstein and those blood transfusions and and so more and so forth so this is just the same chain of logic and it's still here it's nothing new life. nothing new um nothing real any any, any questions any questions like you, you uh, that is you is uh, is uh you know there's enough evidence and maps that tataria was a place do any universities or schools teach about tataria no it's they completely, completely eliminated it's right they, it's completely not, eliminated. It's, they got rid of it they, they like they they wanted to get rid of the old old order they 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 left it out of the history books i mean because you know i tell people they they lied about everything they had to because if they were just left a, just a little window of truth in there we would have blown everything out of the uh the Tartaria equals mining, actually, because the word Tartaria, torus, torsion, torpedo, wow. is spinning, drilling, coming through. Through is also tor, because you know everything is connected to that. So if you if you actually talk about Tartaria sooner or later, you can, you're gonna have to talk about the ancient evidence of ancient technologies and stuff like right. this. And you you sure sure the the this this house collapses, the historical house collapses. That's why you have all those concepts and paradigms to hide this stuff because Tartaria was just a small part of the puzzle, small piece of the puzzle, you know. And that would be, you know, um, corresponding to mining activity, Vulcan, the mining god, Hephaestus, such yeah. things. So, so in that age, 
a lot of these uh, there was an age of mining and that before would, would before be what the archaeologists would say before the age of Aries, what what is the age before the age of Aries? age of taurus yeah taurus and yeah. <laughs> and this the same the uh, spelling so tr is and all those variations with tr and dr also dr and dr are all mm -hmm. related to this tour tar to yeah whatever Indeed. everything is connected and, and, and so and the bible seems to be connected to or have started in the age of taurus yeah so i just wanted to uh share a little screen and uh to so everybody can understand what i was trying to say by the way the guy i mentioned ben he has a lot of books and he has found a lot of different things on the empire of rosh connecting it with um the sons of atlantis i remember one of his books saying which was very interesting so, yeah, so um, yeah. this is like uh, Encyclopedia Britannica on Tara. Tara, Tibetans and mm -hmm. Buddhist savior goddess with numerous forms. Uh, don't forget Also, that. the Irish goddess Tara, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, next, uh, Tara, uh, given name in different cultures. So, uh, <clears throat> Gaelic, Irish, English, Sanskrit. Sanskrit is mm -hmm. literally every language, I would say, because yeah. in Russia... Sanskrit is the proto-language, yes. Yeah. I believe so. In my city, uh, where I was living, we have a river of Tara, and uh, we have Tartaria on the map, so I think this mm -hmm. is like... Uh, th that is worth uh, researching. I mean, Tara could be the name of a goddess, actually, after uh, who Tartarian was. Tara, the mountain, the famous mountain in uh, Serbia. Serbia is like... Uh, also, we had a chat with guys from Serbia, uh, Zakli, uh, uh, and... Uh, oh, was Lady he the Lady guy Mark. talking about the uh, Illyrians? Yeah, he was talking a lot of stuff. He's a very interesting guy, and uh, I, I wish we... Yeah, I remember we, that. We, we can have a chat with you and him once in a while, because he, he is very interesting. Uh, next, Torch. We go in, into... Uh, hmm. That was Tar. That, that, this is Tor. Torch. Torch is... Uh, the the thing that they you use in mining you cannot mine without the torch right and so mm -hmm. it's an instrument of illumination uh underneath the ground uh turbine right uh, can i stop you just quickly have you ever yeah. heard about the perpetual lamps of the ancients they were said to have been made by uh, specific mined asbestos wool that was done in tartary so the princess of Tartary was made, they had made combustible clothing so they could uh, not be burned if they were in a fire. But the same material that they used for the uncombustible clothing was also used for what they called the perpetual lamp that was used in the mines. So it was just a lamp that was burn burning fire perpetually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh... <laughs> Turbine, uh, as the uh, the uh, you know the power the power of the spin. So the TR is uh, so called. I would say it's a movement. It's a movement of return yeah. because a Sanskrit cycle return. We also see tur inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's turn, and uh, it's uh, I would say it's the movement of breaking through. Also with TR inside. Okay, torsion. It's mm -hmm. mechanics. It's also spinning. It's the power. It's uh, applied torque. Also torque. It's uh, you know a relationship between force, a linear momentum, angular momentum. Also rational force, turning effect. Okay, so like this is a rotor, rotation. Okay, also rotation. Yeah, also from that. Uh, Torah. Torah. <laughs> Whoa, uh, we said it at the same time. Yeah, instruction, teaching, or law. So teaching is relating to repeating. So repeat is is return, return, return to what you have learned, and repeating, repeating, yeah. repeating once and again. It's it's a turn of knowledge, I would say. Uh, uh, tur turban. It's the head of uh, I would say one of the nations from Great Artaria. So. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And the looks Shahs like exactly, and the Sultans. Exactly, 
this, <laughs> yes, it's sh the shape of turbine and the architecture itself of those areas has a bunch of columns with those the domes. shapes. Yeah. Yeah. Torro also breaking through. It's a uh, it's a uh, energy. It's coming and it's you know it's uh, pushing energy. So this is all related to that word. In and Russian, the and the bull reacts to red, and the bull the blue blue is very close to bull. So it's the red shift and the blue shift, red shift blue shift. Perhaps, uh, Russian taran. Red bull. Uh, uh, <laughs> So this is like uh, the uh, instrument that is breaking through the door. And the door itself is the harder spelling of Tor. Mm. So all yeah. door coming through. Um, it's the, I think it's the old Danish word for door, Tor. Yeah, I believe of course, of very, course. in the old it's Danish like, or old Germanic languages, yeah. Yeah, it's just the yeah. spelling, different spelling, different accents, uh, breaks. In Russian, it's Tormos. So why would you say uh, tormos to brakes? Because it's turning and it's mm. uh, you know holding what is turning. That's the the uh, the the connection. So this mm. is just a slight uh, number of connections. Uh, yeah, they all show the same thing: a rotation and a circle. Yeah.